Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I am watching CPP Nerds video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning function overloading in C++. So this function overloading feature is not there in C, it is available in C++. We will see how to use function overloading, where to use function overloading and in what scenarios your function will get overloaded successfully and in what scenarios it won't get overloaded at all. Okay. So first of all we will see what is function overloading. And yeah, one more point, how compiler does function overloading, I'll tell you that also. So stay with me, we'll learn all these things. So let's start this. Function overloading is nothing but, let's suppose you have two functions like add and another one is also add, but the parameters are different. One is taking integer x comma integer y and the first one is taking maybe double x and double y okay so if you will do this in c this program will not compile but in c plus plus it will compile let's check that see it has finished and it is compiled successfully what is the actual use i mean why we are keeping two functions at same scope and giving the same name the reason is sometime you want to keep the function name similar but want to get the different behavior okay by depending on the parameters you are passing in that function okay so let's suppose you are passing 1.3 comma 3.2 so if this is the case then your function which is having double and double will get called and if you are passing some integer value then this function will get called and in another one we will give the second one so second and see first one is calling first one and second one is calling the second one okay so this is how you overload the function depending on your parameters okay so this feature was not there in C it is new in C++ and if still the use of this is not clear let me give you an example here write something like void print and here I am passing integer x okay and creating another function print and another function print calling this one then it is like first and if you will print okay uh oh okay so let's compile this See, first, second and third, both, I mean, all three are print function only, but depending on the parameters type, we are able to achieve this. Okay. Let's suppose there is some database. This is your DB and you have some set of functions where you will get the list of people from this database and one function is like get persons and here you will pass date of birth okay so this will return list of people got it now you want to create another function with a similar name like get person and it will return the similar thing list of the people but you want to change the number of parameters or you want to change the parameter itself maybe this time you want to give the name of the persons maybe john then all the people who are having John as their name will come out as a list. Okay. And another function you can create by similar name and you will create a different parameter for that. And that could be the minimum age. Like you can pass a variable, I mean the type minimum age. So all those people who are having at least this much age will get out as a list okay so this function will return the list of those people okay so as you can see you are keeping get person get person and get person but you are changing the parameters okay and this is obviously a good practice because if you will create a function like get person by date of birth get person by name get person by minimum age then it doesn't look good okay as a programmer you should not do that 
So this is the best use someone can achieve using this function overloading. Now here comes the question how compiler is actually doing this function overloading stuff. Actually what happens when your compiler is compiling it it will check okay this add is this one or this one. So it will make it like this add one and add two and this one as add one and this one as add two. This one and two depends if you will go inside and check the compiled code it might look like x c d so here x c d will come and here could be something like that q a then here q a will come okay so compiler is changing your function name and accordingly it is keeping that function here so that you can call that function without having any problem because when you run some function i mean when you run your program and you call some function that function address is used to call that function okay so in order to get that address all function name should be unique in the list so this is a back processing this is called name mangling okay if you want to google it you you can google it you will get more detail about that but you don't have to worry about that name mangling because that is compiler's job so how compiler will get to know that this one is this one actually it is checking that okay both parameters are floating point then only it is keeping this one here and if it is checking okay both parameters are integer it will map to this one okay so that's how it is mapping got it so this was about function overloading and how it is implemented internally and where you will use that now there are few places where you cannot use function or overloading by keeping your parameters in some ways and those ways are like this i have written some rules here these rules are saying that function declarations that differ only in the return type so you might think if i am keeping both as double and if i will change here like integer and maybe double or if i am keeping it as wide also no problem then you might think that this will get overloaded no you cannot overload using return type of the function okay if you will compile this you will get the error even if both are returning different data types so first point tells that you cannot overload on the basis of return type only okay so the second is in class if we have similar function name and parameters but one is static function and another one is non static function so what is that two functions one is static function which is returning void and let's call that function as fun and then people might think that okay one is static and another one is non static so you can overload like this but this is an error let's check that see it is giving error here so you cannot do like this so the second point is this one third is when we receive array as a pointer or array both are similar let's suppose integer array okay and you might think okay this add is different than this add because both are having different different parameters but it is not okay so let's compile this let me comment this one first so if you will compile this it will say that ambiguity fourth is constant and volar tile doesn't make any difference so the constant okay then also both are equal so if you'll compile this one then also it is giving you the error and if you will make the volatile okay so if you'll compile this see it is giving you the error okay so constant and volatile doesn't make any difference in function overloading okay so let's look at the fifth point here one function parameter declared as function type and another as pointer to the same function type both are equal let's see that also so if you are taking integer this as a function type and in another function you are taking the pointer of that type then also if you will compile this both are equal okay it is telling you the ambiguity so both are equal this is a function type 
which is taking nothing and returning integer and this is the function pointer which is taking nothing and returning the integer so in case of function overloading you cannot overload on the basis of function type and function pointer type last one is two function parameters are equal if they differ only if one of them is having default parameters so if one function is like this integer x and another one is integer p is equal to 10 so if you are familiar with this default parameter thing you will understand it better so in one function you are passing default parameter another function is it, you are not passing default parameter but the type of the parameter is similar then also it, this is ambiguity okay compile this see it is giving you the error so we are done here thanks for watching and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button it will help me a lot and if you haven't subscribed yet go for it because you will get the latest videos when i will upload one okay so Thanks for watching.